Do you think new replacement windows and patio doors have to be expensive? Think again. I'm Andrew Kanopic from Renewal by Anderson. As the full-service replacement window division of Anderson, Renewal by Anderson often has larger discounts and better financing than other companies and contractors. Right now, save 20% on every window and save 20% on every patio door. With zero money down, zero payments, and zero interest for one year. You can also save money by replacing your windows in stages. With us, you can even save a lot by simply choosing a different window or patio door style. For affordable windows and patio doors that will last, call Renewal by Anderson to schedule your free appointment and save 20% on your project. Call 1-800-406-8700. 1-800-406-8700. That's 1-800-406-8700. Offer not available in all areas. Restrictions and conditions apply. Call for license information. TCL is a proud sponsor of the 1500 ESPN Studios. TCL, America's fastest growing TV brand. This is information not being reported by anyone else. You want the scoop? Here it is with Darren Doogie Wolfson. The vote is in. There were definitely some no votes. It was close, but yes, one out. Yes, for a new Scoop Podcast. It is Scoop Podcast episode 183 being recorded on Election Day, the 6th of November, Tuesday afternoon. We will begin with former Viking Antoine Winfield Sr., Then I will unleash some notes I have when it comes to the Vikings, the Gophers, the Wolves, and the Twins. But let's get right to Antoine Winfield Sr. This particular Scoop podcast is brought to you by MyBookie, MyBookie.com, and Fair State Brewing. I will tell you about both in just a bit, but let's start with Antoine Winfield Sr. 14 years in the NFL as a defensive back, a three-time Pro Bowler. He was second-team All-Pro in 2008. He spent nine of his 14 years with the Vikings. He now has one son on the Gophers and another son who just committed to the Gophers. So lots to get to with Antoine. Antoine, before we get to your sons and the connection to the Gophers, let's start with your experience here on Sunday. You were at the Vikings-Lions game. You sounded the, what, the gallo horn. How was your experience on Sunday watching the Vikings in person? <laughs> it was a great experience. Uh, actually, it was my first time uh, being in the stadium. Uh, I-, I loved it. I love what the Wilfs have done up there. Um, just being in the atmosphere was uh, very exciting. How did the invite come about? I mean, I'm surprised that you haven't been to a game yet in this, what, the third year of U.S. Bank Stadium. Oh, right, right. Uh, me too. Um, but, you know, I've been kind of busy. But um, I was up there for an appearance. I did an appearance outside uh, for Hyundai, and then Mark Wolf called me the day before the game and asked me did I want to sound horn. So that's how it came about. And I suppose when Mark Wolf, the owner, calls you, that's an easy yes. Oh, very easy yes. So what stood out when you watched the Vikings? I mean, that was a dominating defensive performance. You were a part of many good Vikings defenses. That was another great defensive effort by the Vikings on Sunday. Uh, yeah, very excited about the team. Um, you know, of course, it was a division opponent. Um, a must win, kind of, you know, in that division for them to get a nice little jump. But, uh, you know, Detroit's playing really good ball, but that, that defensive front of the Vikings is unreal. I think they had like 10 sacks. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a team record. Yeah, it was. It was a team record. 10 sacks, nine from defensive linemen, one from a defensive back, Mackenzie Alexander, untouched. I mean, that was something that you loved to do back in the day, right? Blitz and get to the quarterback. Oh, of course. I mean, Anything to help the team win, but uh, especially being coming from the nickelback position, blitzing, uh, causing turnovers, those are big plays. When you're sitting there in the stands, do you watch a game differently? Are you studying the defensive backs? Are you watching the game, you know, any differently than just a casual fan? Are you just watching the ball and just seeing how everything plays out? Oh, no, I'm sure I'm watching it differently. Uh, I played <laughs> – 28 years of football, so I know the game inside and out. So I know when a defensive back is making a mistake, whose fault it is, who's supposed to be where. So I I know all that. Did you see any Vikings defensive backs make mistakes? Um, You know what? Really, I was on the sideline talking to some of my old teammates and some of the trainers and security guys. I was really catching up, so I really didn't focus on the game that much. How about overall, though? I mean, Xavier Rhodes, I mean, would you consider him one of the better cornerbacks in the game today? Uh, without a doubt. Um, I didn't realize he was that big. I seen him on the sideline. I mean, he, he's a really big guy. But, yes, I love the way he plays the game. Uh, I love the way they use him. 
traveling with the number one receiver. That's probably getting paid the big bucks. Who are some other cornerbacks that you admire from afar? Oh, right now in the game, I love um, oh, who would be some guys? I would have to go with oh, I love Richard Sherman, of course, from San Francisco now. I mm-hmm. love Patrick Peterson. I love the old school guys that's still hanging on, still playing at a high level. Wasn't Sherman a former teammate? Yes, I was out uh, training camp with him in Seattle. So, I mean, you saw up close just how good he is, and he's still pretty good to this day. Oh, yeah, he's a special player. Uh, big, long, rangy, uh, plays with confidence, and uh, always around the ball making plays. How many current Vikings were your teammates? Was Marcus Sherrill's one of your teammates? Yes, I think Sherrill's, uh, Dejo, Harrison, Everson, and I think that's it. Yeah, I suppose Everson because he's the senior member of the team. I mean, but still, I mean, you think about it. I mean, you're many years removed. I mean, what, five, six years removed from playing for the Vikings. Pretty impressive that that many guys are still around. Oh, yeah, it happens. You know, with the people change teams every year, getting traded, uh, free agency. So it was good to catch up with those guys. You know what? On Sandejo, on Cheryl's, if I had told you six years ago that those guys would still be going strong, would you have said, hey, I believe you, or would you have been surprised? No, I believe. No, I was saying I would believe you. Because uh, they were young, yeah, a lot younger when I was there. I think 2012 was my last season there. But, yeah, there were some players. Um, there were some playmakers. So, if you make plays, you'll stay longer in the league. As you look at that last year when you went to camp with the Seattle Seahawks, I mean, is that how you saw things playing out for the end of your career, that you'd give it one last chance, see if you could make a roster, and if you didn't make a roster, then you would walk away? Or did things not end the way you wanted it to end? Uh, I don't think it ended the way I wanted it to end. Of course, I wanted to play my last season out with the Vikings and go out with the fans here and all that. But it doesn't happen like that, and it rarely does. Um, as an NFL player, we all understand it's a business, and anything can happen at any time. I suppose that when you walked away, I mean, that was prime time for, for helping develop your sons, who are now both Division One players. Oh, very excited about that. But uh, I've been, like I said, I put a football in their hands when they – first learning to walk so this is nothing new but i'm excited to see where they are now and i suppose on austin i mean he's right a uh, senior in high school now just committed to the gopher so he'll technically be a division one football player next year yes next year um yes we are Ant- antoine jr is already up there at the university of minnesota and austin will be coming up there this fall take us through your involvement i mean how everything came about with austin and his commitment to the gophers um, I think it was the connection with Antoine. You know, of course, Antoine's up there. He's mm-hmm. had a couple good games. You know, we got to keep him healthy. He hasn't, that's, we'll, that'll be correct, I'm sure, down the line. He'll, get good, he'll be good. But Austin, uh, yeah, he wants to play with his brother. I mean, I know it was a goal of his to play Division One ball. And why not have an opportunity to play with your older brother? How is his senior year going down there And what? He plays in the Houston area? Yes, we're in the Woodlands. Uh, he plays for the Woodlands High School. Um, they're actually, I think their last game is this Thursday and then they start the, the state playoffs. So right now they're seven and three and, uh, he's having a really good year. That's great. And then on, on Antoine Jr. I mean, heck, I mean, he's built such a name here in the Twin Cities, Antoine, that we now need to refer to you as Antoine Winfield Sr. I mean, for the longest time you were just <laughs> Antoine Winfield, but now you're Antoine Winfield Sr. or your junior's dad. Yeah. I, I heard that a lot. Um, uh, in the stadium Sunday, everyone came up to me talking about Junior. But I, I, I love that young man. I love what he's doing. I love just his character. I mean, he's very humble. Uh, but when he's on the field, he definitely stands out. Yeah, I mean, you think about earlier this season. Well, heck, I mean, just look at the defense the last handful of weeks. I mean, minus him, the defense has gone down the tubes. But, I mean, you think about, you know, whether it was, what, the punt return in the opening game against New Mexico State – or the great game ceiling interception against Fresno State. I mean, those were big time plays. Those were those were highlight real type plays that not many players in the country can make. Oh, so true, and that, and that's rare because um, I think those two games were back to back, and he had made Sports Center top ten. I said that that's I've never done it before, so I was excited for him and what he's accomplished so far up there. When did you know that Junior had a chance to be a special player? Uh, I would say once we got down here, maybe his sophomore or junior season, uh, I've seen flashes. But um, I have a weight room at the house, and when I say he was up there all day, every day, just getting stronger, 
uh, we're on the field working, honing the skills. And his senior year, I was like, oh, he, he definitely has it. And I, he's showing it up there on the field. Did you have football in mind when you decided to to plant in, in the Houston area, you know, long-term? I mean, you guys were in the Eden Prairie School District, right? So, you know, Junior was a part of the Eden Prairie Football Association for a bit. But did you have football in mind, you know, Texas high school football in mind, when you and, and your wife decided to plant in, in the Houston area? Yes, absolutely. Um, I wanted to get them down here in a nice program. And uh, like I said, we moved to the Woodlands, one of the best schools in this area. Um, I think they're winning the district just about every season. So, And I've always used to hear about Texas football. Uh, all the players that I used to play with in the league, a lot, a lot are from Texas, they used to talk about it a lot. And I just wanted to experience it and have my kids experience it. On junior, and you said, you know, we just we need to keep him healthy. I mean, how's he doing after the after the foot surgery? And when was that? About what four or five weeks ago? Yeah, I think it was uh, maybe yeah about five weeks ago. Yeah, I think he tore the ligament in his foot. I think they called it Liz Frank. I think I had it uh, when I played. So it was very rare. I mean, he was just really just playing, and it snapped. So uh, he um, he had the surgery. I think he's in a boot for a couple more weeks. Uh, he'll rehab and come back better than ever. And he should be okay even as soon as, what, spring practice in March, or is it a little bit later than that? Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm sure the coaches and trainers will handle all that, but I, I'm sure he'll be out there uh, game one. And then the idea is to get a medical redshirt year, so he'll get another year of eligibility? Yes, I think uh, they already accepted that. I want to say next season he'll be – another sophomore he'll be a redshirt sophomore again i mean that's pretty nuts isn't it that he'll be in his fourth year in school but just be a redshirt sophomore oh i I love it (laughs) i absolutely love it gives him time to go ahead and graduate and he still has his uh years of eligibility yeah and i suppose i mean with his talent that you know the nfl is going to be an option at some point so if he wants to play you know if he wants to be here for six years play four years that's great if there's an opportunity to go pro earlier than that, he can do that too. Yeah, and that's what we're thinking. Um, absolutely. First, we're going to get him through school, get that degree, and then, you know, the NFL is a bonus. What was your reaction, Antoine, when you saw that, that junior's defensive coordinator, Rob Smith, was let go the other day? I mean, that's, that's always tough. Um, like, But like I said, if the NFL, college is always a business. If you're not producing, then – the head coach has to make a decision. I'm sure it was a tough decision for Coach Fleck to make. How is your relationship with Coach Fleck? Um, we talked on the phone a few times. Um, I'll be up there when Austin makes his official visit, so I'll get to know him a little better when I come up there then. When is the official visit? Is it for the Northwestern game in a week? I'm not sure. It might be after his season because I know he um, the playoffs are about to start. Oh, week, sure. So might, yeah, 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 so you can connect with, with Coach Fleck. You know, when whenever you're up here, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it's been an interesting couple of years for for Junior. I mean, we all know what he should not have been a part of, you know, publicly with you know the ten players being announced in December of 2016. You know, you think about then and now. Now, I mean, it's been a whirlwind of a couple of years for Junior. Oh, it has. I mean, but that's life. <laughs> we all go through things, but it's all about how you bounce back. And um, I like, I love the way he's handled himself. Um, he's doing the right things that he's supposed to do now. So all that water under the bridge. Did he ever come close to leaving here? Or was he always intent on staying here and fighting everything through and remaining a gopher? Uh, well, when everything was going on, I wanted him to leave, but it's not my decision. I, I wanted him to handle that. I, I, I did the same thing with my college years. I wanted to pick the place I wanted to go, go through that. So it, he, he, I think he made the right decision to stay. And it seems like, I mean, it seems like Coach Fleck just, I mean, he thinks the world of your son, you know, which has to mean a lot that, you know, through the transition, you know, the fact that your son did not technically commit to Coach Fleck, but it seems like him and Coach Fleck have really built up a solid relationship. Yes, they have. And, he, and Antoine talks very highly of Coach Fleck. Uh, he just loves his energy. Uh, he loves the message. Uh, Coach Fleck loves Antoine's leadership. Um, it, it's a, they have a great bond. I'll let you go after this. Are you following much with, with your alma mater and everything going on with Ohio State? Um, I've, I've been up to a few games. Uh, of course, I watch it on, on television. I uh, wasn't too 
thrilled about that game against Purdue, but it happens. Yeah, it does. And then, you know, you think about just everything that was – that was in the news for the wrong reason, you know, weeks prior with Urban Meyer and, you know, what did he know? What didn't he know? But it seems like, you know, at least for, you know, I don't want to say for the most part, but at least to some degree, it seems like we're, we're a little past that point of, of everything, you know, everybody kind of piling on Urban Meyer. I mean, who's to know what he knew or what he didn't know, but as a coach, I, you don't know what's going on in the next man's house. So I don't really want to get into all that. Yeah, I mean, heck, I mean, it's it's hard to keep watch over. I mean, you're the CEO in many ways, right, Antoine, where you've got over 100 players you need to keep an eye on. You've got your staff. I mean, we're talking, you know, dozens of people on your staff, from a recruiting staff to your assistant coaching staff to your training staff to your quality control <laughs> staff. There are so many people that you need to oversee. I mean, there probably is something to be said about it's hard to keep track of every single person. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's hard to keep track of the people at my house, let alone hundreds of people. So, yeah. Well, Antoine, I appreciate it, and hopefully you'll get up here again. Maybe the Vikings can make a serious run in January. Maybe you can come back up here for for another Hyundai appearance. Maybe, heck, who knows how it'll play out. Maybe the Vikings can host an NFC Championship game against, you know, Philadelphia or something like that if you're the three seed. Maybe host the four seed in the NFC Championship game then maybe end up in Atlanta in early February. Hey, that would be nice. I would definitely be there. Antoine, I greatly appreciate it, and I'll certainly be in touch. All right, talk to you later. That was former Viking. He spent nine years with the Vikings. Antoine Winfield Sr., Fair State Brewing Cooperative, is nice enough to help bring you the Scoop Podcast. They are the Upper Midwest's first member-owned brewery. They specialize in delicious sours, lagers, and hoppy ales. I had one of their hoppy ales at Lat 14, a great new restaurant in the West Metro on Saturday. So Fair State Brewing is out. Out and about readily available for your enjoyment. They have re-released Mirror Universe, by the way, a double dry hopped hazy IPA brewed with wheat, oats, citro mosaic, and El Dorado hops. It was a limited offering in the spring, but now it's available year round. Look for it at your local bars, liquor stores, or swing by the tap room, the Fair State Brewing Tap Room in Northeast Minneapolis at Lowry and Central. Fair State Brewing. We will keep the football theme, the Vikings theme going here on Scoop Podcast episode 183. I tweeted this earlier on Tuesday. I am told that Vikings tight end David Morgan avoided serious injury, serious ligament damage, but he did injure his left knee in the win over Detroit on Sunday. He's expected to miss some time. It'll depend on how rehab goes. He should be back, though, before the season is over. This is not a season-ending injury, but he is expected to miss some time. On the positivity side of things, Anthony Barr, I'm told, absolutely will be back for the Bears game on Sunday night, November 18th. Remember that that game got flexed to Sunday night. It is no longer a noon start on November 18th. It is a 7:20 start. Vikings at Bears. Vikings at Soldier Field. Interesting turnaround for Chicago. In many ways, the NFL screwed Chicago. They play the early game on Thanksgiving in Detroit. So they play the late game on Sunday, then have to travel on Wednesday for a Thursday morning, 11.30 a.m. Central kickoff against Detroit. That has to be the shortest turnaround in NFL history. Anthony Barr back for the Bears game. Stephon Diggs. Also expected back from the rib injury, expected back for the Bears game. Guard Tom Compton, a little up in the air with the knee injury, but some level of optimism that he will return. When he is good, do look for him to take back his starting job from Danny Isadura. But Brian O'Neill firmly entrenched at right tackle. So Rashad Hill is now a backup. Your tackles are Riley Reef, left tackle, and rookie Brian O'Neill at right tackle. He has progressed very, very nicely. He is further along than they ever thought. Early indications, May, June. I remember the rookie minicamp talking to a Vikings insider. He suggested to me that if O'Neill saw the field this year, something went wrong, painfully wrong. Now, you can only hold so many offensive linemen. They were never letting go of a second-round pick. They've always liked his potential, loved his future, but they just thought that this year would be rushing things. But he has progressed so nicely. He's put on some weight, some muscle. So the Vikings very, very happy with second-round pick, right tackle, Brian O'Neill. In their minds, they have their right tackle for many years to come. Can't recall if I passed along this note last week. 
So I'll pass it along now with the trade deadline a week ago. The Vikings never came close to making a deal, told that by an insider. They certainly had some dialogue, but they never came close to making a trade. Cool gesture by general manager Rick Spielman of the Vikings. On Friday, he got to Columbus, Ohio early for the Nebraska-Ohio State game. His son, J.D. Spielman, of course, is a top receiver for Nebraska. So Rick goes to as many Nebraska games as he can get to. He puts on his dad hat, but he also puts on his scouting hat. So two birds, one stone. Watch his son also scout Nebraska, scout the opponent. So anyway, he got to Columbus, Ohio early on Friday, had some connection to some professor, ended up talking to a class. Can't recall if it was a sports journalism class or sports management class, but he spent some time in one of the classes at Ohio State on Friday talking about analytics. So very cool gesture by Vikings GM Rick Spielman ahead of him watching Ohio State beat J.D. Spielman and Nebraska on Saturday morning. Victoria, Minnesota native, former Chanhassen High School star Frank Ragnow, starting guard for the Detroit Lions, had about 60 family and friends at U.S. Bank Stadium on Sunday to watch him take on the Vikings. Recall, the Vikings so badly wanted Ragnow in the draft in April, but he went 10 picks ahead of the Vikings. The Vikings are thrilled that Mike Hughes fell to them, but they so badly were hoping that Ragnow would fall to pick 30. If he had, I'm telling you, the Vikings would have gobbled him up. Want entertainment designed just for you? Then check out customizable streaming TV from Xfinity. It makes your life simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity gives you customizable streaming TV options. Enjoy the most free shows anywhere on any device and even access your streaming apps right on your TV with X1. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today to learn more. Restrictions apply. All right, let's move on to the Wolves. Personnel guy Brian Pauga scheduled to be in Indianapolis on Tuesday night to scout the Kansas-Michigan State game and the Duke-Kentucky game. So many good NBA prospects playing Tuesday night in that classic, whatever it's called. The Champions Classic, is that what it's called? I can't even recall what the heck it's called. But whatever it is, two games, one venue, many NBA teams will be there, including the Wolves. Speaking of scouting, Tom Thibodeau had a chance to sit in the stands on Saturday in Portland to watch the Lakers and Blazers. On the Lakers, Eddie Sefko, longtime NBA reporter for the Dallas Morning News, suggested about a week ago to keep an eye on the Lakers and the Jimmy Butler sweepstakes. Now, the Lakers have long been considered the favorite to land Kawhi Leonard. But interestingly enough, when the Raptors were in L.A. the other day to play the Lakers, Leonard sat out. There's been some national steam that the Raptors are feeling better and better about their chances to keep Leonard long term. Certainly the start that they are off to helps. They can make a serious run. They can win the East. I mean, that's how good Toronto is. So maybe Kawhi looks at it and says, hey, it's not going to get any better than this. So maybe the Lakers have some intel that it'll be hard to land Kawhi that if they can get Jimmy Butler, acquire his bird rights, that no guarantee that they would get Jimmy on the outright market. Now, Jimmy has all sorts of desire to play in L.A. He spends a lot of time in the offseason in Los Angeles. The report initially was he had interest in playing for the Clippers. I can promise you he has interest in playing for the Lakers. But, yeah, we'll keep an eye on L.A. If I still had to bet, I would bet on Jimmy landing eventually in the Eastern Conference. But, hey, all it takes is one new offer. The Lakers certainly have some intriguing young pieces. But from my own initial steam, I haven't heard a ton on the Lakers. But certainly Sefco has some good sources. So I wanted to pass along that note from the longtime Dallas Morning News NBA reporter. I would still keep an eye, though, on teams like Philadelphia and Miami. No Washington steam. I've been asked a lot about the Washington Wizards. No Wizards steam. Also, no Mavericks steam. I've been asked a lot about the Mavericks. I forget. Some national reporter volunteered the Mavericks recently, a week, week and a half ago. I'm told the Mavericks will not be landing Jimmy Butler via a trade. I do still anticipate a Jimmy Butler trade when... Who knows? Some people have said it'll become a reality before Thanksgiving, so that would be in the next couple weeks. As I sit here and tape this on Tuesday afternoon, the 6th of November, I don't have a sense that any trade is close. I still don't have a sense that Tom Thibodeau actually wants to trade Jimmy Butler, but hey, the owner, Glenn Taylor, was on this podcast late last week. 
You heard him say that they have to make a trade. Now we talked about some different scenarios where, hey, could you just play this thing out? But I can just tell you that the owner, Glenn Taylor, will eventually become more involved. I still 100% foresee a trade. It's just a matter of when. When will that trade occur? Will it be closer to the deadline in early February or will it be in the next couple of weeks. Heck, all it takes is one new offer. Are the Rockets willing to do Eric Gordon, P.J. Tucker, and a couple first-round picks? No sense whatsoever that Houston is willing to go that far at this point, but you never know. Is there some mystery team? I'm still convinced there's some team. I mean, Glenn said that over half the league, or about half the league, has inquired. So I'm sure there's at least one of those teams. I mean, we keep talking about Miami, Philadelphia, rightfully so. Those teams are absolutely interested. Houston and now the Lakers to some extent, plus the Clippers on the outside looking in, maybe Brooklyn on the outside looking in. But if half the league has inquired, I think it's a safe bet that some team, maybe it's a mystery team, maybe it's not, but maybe it's a team that's not being talked about a whole lot right now, but that some team has strong interest. What that team is willing to offer, heck, remains to be seen. But I'm just telling you, whether it's November or early February or sometime in between, I do still foresee Jimmy Butler getting traded. As for whether Jimmy plays Wednesday night in L.A. against the Lakers, a reminder what I talked about last week on one of the podcasts, he is calling the shot. So I guess we'll have to wait and see how he is doing either later on on Tuesday or Wednesday morning after shoot-around. But I will continue to stress that he enjoys the bright lights of Los Angeles. So it is the Lakers. It is a premier team. It is what national TV, isn't it, on ESPN on Wednesday night, so there are some strong draws for Jimmy to actually play, play in another game. A couple other NBA notes with Wolves ties. I see that Alfonso McKinney is playing well for the Golden State Warriors. The Wolves actually invited him to their free agent camp in early September, so there was interest, but his side didn't get the sense that the interest was genuine, that the Wolves extended so many offers for players to work out here that there wasn't a sense from the McKinney side that the Wolves had genuine interest in McKinney. Well, I would say it worked out pretty well because he is playing very well for the best team in the league. Also, Alonzo Trier playing very well for the New York Knicks on a two-way deal. Surprised he did not get drafted. Anyway, the Wolves had him in for a pre-draft workout. I thought, you know what? There's some talent there. Remember him at Arizona? The Wolves did not have any interest in Trier, though, post-draft. All right, let's get to Gophers basketball. But first, let me tell you about MyBookie, MyBookie.com. Remember, who you're betting on is just as important as who you are betting with. That's why I always tell people to bet with MyBookie. Trust me, guys, they are your best bet this college basketball season, NBA season, NHL season, NFL season, college football season, so on and so on. They've been in business for years. They have great reviews online. Their mobile site is easy to use. And I'm telling you, I would only recommend a service to my listeners that's been good to me. That's why I'm urging you to make your way to my bookie. You win, they pay. MyBookie.com. M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. MyBookie.com. My bookie is, this is good news, slammed with new betters especially with college basketball tipping off, and they want to give everyone the best service possible. So if you're willing to deposit after 6 p.m. Central Time, they will give you an additional $25 free play on deposits over $100. Also, if you join my bookie, use the promo code SCOOP, SCOOP, and they will match your deposit dollar for dollar. That is mybookie.com today, and you can get all sorts of goodies from my bookie. You play, you win, you get paid. It is my bookie, mybookie.com. Sometime in the coming days, we should find out if Breck basketball player David Roddy chooses the Gophers. Will it be the Gophers? Will it be Northwestern? Or will it be Colorado State? He did turn down a football opportunity at the University of Wyoming. Phenomenal quarterback, but he is going the basketball route in college, not the football route. I will continue to say that the Big Ten is a pretty good bet, but will it be the Gophers? Hmm. Hmm. We'll just leave it at that, but never say never. But I do know that the Gophers offering late, very late in the process, did not do them 
any favors. No NBA scouts are credentialed for the Gophers opener against Omaha Tuesday night at Williams Arena, but scouts have been through to practice, and scouts will be in for certain Gophers games throughout the course of the year, taking a look at Amir Coffey, Jordan Murphy, and others, including freshman big man Daniel Oturu, and look for scouts to be at Williams Arena as soon as Monday when the Gophers host Utah. Also on the Gophers front, Nothing new on the Marcus Carr situation as of now. The Gophers are listing him as sitting out for the year per NCAA transfer rules. So the Gophers claim as of Monday late afternoon that they have not heard any word from the NCAA. Presumably with the season tipping off on Tuesday night, they would have heard by now. So the Gophers are operating as if Marcus Carr will have to sit out the year as the transfer from the University of Pittsburgh, which means that Amir Coffey should get plenty of run at point guard. This is something I've wanted for years. This is something that Fred Hoiberg sold Amir on, and Amir would have landed in Ames if Fred had stayed in Ames instead of taking the Chicago Bulls job. Amir is a playmaker. He's a great decision maker. He's a great passer. Amir Coffey on the ball is a very good thing, a matchup nightmare for many opposition guards. So I love the idea, finally, after a few years, Richard Pitino coming around on playing Amir Coffey, not exclusively, but playing him some at point guard. Congratulations to Richard Pitino. He was a hit on Sunday night at Interlocking Country Club, his fourth annual coaches versus cancer gala. He raised, he helped raise, not him solely, but he helped raise over $100,000. I was texting with somebody who was a sponsor, somebody who was there. He said Patino did an awesome job entertaining the crowd. Also on the local basketball front, I tweeted out the photos the other day. Roy Williams of North Carolina, along with two of his assistants, including Hubert Davis, had an in-home visit with Zeke Naji, Zeke of Hopkins, the senior forward among the top 35 players in the country in the class of 2019. He was fresh off his Purdue official visit. He will consider North Carolina. He will continue to listen to their pitch. He did announce a final five about a, what, a month ago, give or take. It was Baylor, Purdue, UCLA, Kansas, and Arizona. But he will consider what North Carolina is pitching him. Per his dad, he is still expected to announce his collegiate choice before November is over. Sometime right after or right before Thanksgiving. So North Carolina has a lot of ground to make up. But again, the Najee family, specifically Zeke, is open-minded to what North Carolina is pitching. Shameless plug before I get to some Twins notes. I am filling in for Mackie and Judd on Friday. Friday afternoon, the 9th of November, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. You can always stream the show, 1500ESPN.com. We will do a Wolves roundtable from 3 to 4 o'clock. Manny Hill will be in studio. He is always in studio. So he'll be in studio. He does a great job with the Wolves podcast, a part of the 1500 ESPN family. He pays a ton of attention to the Wolves. Then John Krasinski from The Athletic will be in studio, as will Dane Moore, who is now a contributor to 1500ESPN.com. So we will go Wolves heavy, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Then from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m., Richard Coffey, Amir's dad, former gopher, former Timberwolf. It is the 30-year anniversary of the Wolves, so Richard will be in studio to reminisce about the Wolves, his time with the Wolves, then talk plenty of gophers heading into Monday's game against Utah so he can review the Tuesday game against Omaha, look ahead to that game on Monday against a Power 6 opponent. Finally, a Power 6 opponent, a non-conference opponent coming to Williams Arena. It is the Utah Utes on Monday at 8 p.m. So I look forward to hosting 3 to 6 o'clock on Friday. Sage Rosenfels also expected to make his normal Friday appearance. All right, let's wrap Scoop Podcast episode 183 with Twins Notes. It is the GM meetings this week in Carlsbad, California. Derek Falvey, Thad Levine, Daniel Adler, and Rob Antney from the Twins front office representing the Twins. The Twins certainly will talk to other teams. This is when seeds are planted or they're continued to be planted on the trade front. So the Twins certainly having dialogue with other teams in Carlsbad. Plus, they are meeting with a number of agents. They were expected to have some time with the Boros Corporation, the Levinson Brothers, and the agent for Patrick Corbin. The Levinson Brothers 
represent Daniel Murphy, Familia, the reliever, Joe Kelly, the reliever. If you look at the Levinson brothers free agent list, they have a number of fits that make some sense for the twins. If you look at the Boros clients, not necessarily Bryce Harper, but if you look at some of the other clients that he has, maybe even Dallas Keuchel, I don't see Keuchel ending up with the twins, but the twins were expected to meet with the Boris people the Levinson brothers, or at least one of the Levinson brothers, and the agent for Patrick Corbin. So the Twins very active this week in Carlsbad, California. The Athletic was the first to report that Derek Shelton will return to the Twins. My understanding is he was always going to return to the Twins if he did not get the Rangers managerial job. So he didn't get the Rangers managerial job. Him and Rocco Baldelli have a history together from their Tampa Bay days together. He was always open-minded to working with, not necessarily under, I mean, working in conjunction with new manager Rocco Baldelli. So certainly not surprising once we heard that Shelton wasn't getting the Rangers managerial job that he would stay with the Twins. Frank Viola, Twins legend, would love a shot to interview for the pitching coach job, but he has not been contacted. As of Tuesday morning, the sense is he will not be contacted. No real buzz outside of the name Charles Nagy for the Twins pitching coach job, but it will not be Frank Viola. There is a sense from a number of agents that the Twins are willing to spend good money. They spent money last winter, that the Twins are willing to spend money this winter. Bullpen, starting rotation, the infield. I mean, they have many needs. So we'll continue to track the Twins happenings. Unlike the NHL, the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball free agency is more of a slow play. Although last winter was a mirage that there is a belief that things will speed up a little bit more this year compared to last year, that there may even be a good amount of activity before the winter meetings in Vegas in about four weeks. But certainly the Twins planting all sorts of seeds this week in California that many agents expect the Twins to be very active, both on the trade front and on the free agent front. I promise in the near future I'll dig more on the hockey side of things. The Wild playing great hockey. The Gophers men's hockey team is ramping up its season. I'm actually doing something with Neil Sheehy, the agent for Ryan Suter in the near future, a cool story angle that involves Neil. It also has a hook with the Gophers women's hockey team. So I promise future Scoop podcasts I'll dive more into hockey. I'll track down Ryan or Matt Hendricks. Hendricks has been on the podcast a couple times. He's a friend of the podcast, as is Ryan. So I promise later on I will go heavier on the Wild and Gophers. But for now, we are done. Scoop Podcast episode 183 is in the books. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. TCL launched a new lineup of award-winning 4K Roku TVs, to deliver the best sports, movies, TV shows, and thousands of streaming channels. TCL's personalized home screen makes it easy to customize your TCL to fit the way you watch. Binge watch what you want, when you want. TCL delivers excellent picture quality, sleek design, and stunning resolution at an affordable price. TCL, America's fastest-growing TV brand, is available at major retailers everywhere. Learn more at TCLUSA.com. Election Day. I'm Ed Donahue with an AP News Minute. In some parts of the country, severe weather could have an impact on voter turnout. A line of storms is moving through an area from Louisiana to South Carolina. Homes are without power. Patrick Miller's with the local EMS in Rutherford County, Tennessee. Homes were damaged by heavy winds. I've not ever seen a straight line wind do this to a a, a brick and mortar home. One person has died in Tennessee. Americans are deciding if Republicans hold on to the majority in Congress and if there will be party shifts in some races for governor. The AP Sagar Magani reports President Trump has put a lot of effort into campaigning for Republicans. Voters are expected to cast ballots in record numbers and rendering a verdict on Trump's tenure so far. Whether his election was a one-off or if his slash and burn styles the future of American politics. The president himself is not on the ballot, but has been telling some Supporters, the election seen as a referendum on him and his movement. I'm Ed Donahue.